there's a mistake that I see the vast majority of property investors making. It stresses them out, it holds them back, and a lot of the time, it prevents them from investing at all. And worst of all, we've contributed to it. I'll tell you what that mistake is, and towards the end, I'll share some surprising data that should stop you making it too. Over the years, we've done a lot to popularize something known as the 18-year property cycle. The model is a simple one. Prices crash, they take four years to bottom out, they grow for 14 years, and then they crash again. And it fits the historical data pretty well, predicting the 2008 and early 90s crashes perfectly. In theory, knowing about this is great because you can buy in at the bottom, sell at the peak, buy in again at a lower price a couple of years later, and then do it all over again. But it isn't magic. In practice, the 18 years is just a long-term average. Some cycles are shorter, some are longer, some fit the model perfectly, and some you have to squint a bit. And therein lies the problem. Because when people learn about the cycle, it doesn't give them a reassuring sense of certainty and predictability, it gets them asking questions like this. These are perfectly sensible first questions to ask after learning about the cycle, and I don't blame anyone for asking them. But these questions are actually extremely dangerous for three reasons. Problem one is that it presupposes that there is someone who has the magic answer about what's going to happen in the future. So success involves finding that guru and just following what they say. Problem two is that by focusing on this very obvious, very sensible question, investors are completely missing what the biggest takeaway from the 18 year cycle actually is. I'll tell you about that one at the end. And problem three is that focusing on what's going to happen in the short to medium term actually prevents people from taking the actions that are proven to lead to success. Let me give you an example of this third problem. Cast your mind back to 2016 when the UK voted to leave the EU. You can let me know in the comments if you think that was a good idea. I'm just kidding, please don't, please, please don't. George Osborne, the chancellor at the time, said in a speech that immediately after the vote, house prices could fall by 10 to 18%. And house prices could fall by a third, said Mark Carney, the Bank of England's governor at the time. No problem though, because we've got the 18 year cycle, right? Counting forward from the last crash in 2008, it clearly told us that we were right in the mid cycle. So if you believe in the model, absolutely nowhere near a crash. Clearly the right thing to do would be to take advantage of this powerful special knowledge and snap up some deals while the markets were at peak fear. Is that what happened? Absolutely not. Rather than snapping into immediate action, our community couldn't stop talking about whether this meant the property cycle was broken. The property cycle had previously been disrupted by world wars, so you could argue that this event was going to be so cataclysmic in terms of its economic, political and social impact that we'd have to throw out the model because prices would crash just like the experts said they would. We actually put out an episode of the Property Podcast at the time defending the model and describing what was happening as just a wobble. But I personally spoke to lots of investors who were spooked into staying out of the market for this whole Brexit period. So what happened? Well, as you probably know, the market didn't crash. In fact, between the referendum in June 2016 and the eventual exit date in January 2020, the average UK property grew in price by 9%. Okay, that's hardly spectacular stuff, but it kind of is when you start adding it up. Imagine that you'd had £100,000 in the bank in June 2016, which you would have invested in property if it hadn't been for all this uncertainty. If you'd used that money to buy a £300,000 property with a reasonable amount of leverage, and if it had then grown by the UK average, by the time we actually left the EU in January 2020, you would have made a capital gain of £27,000. And if that property made you a net rental return of 4%, then over that period, you would have had rental profits of £42,000. That would have given you a total gain over the Brexit period of £69,000 on your £100,000 investment. But hey, at least by investing in February 2020, you were completely safe from any unexpected global events from affecting your investment. The point is, it's fine to be nervous about making an investment, but the promise of the 18 year cycle was that it removed that nervousness. For some investors, I'm sure it did and they'll have done very well, but for many, it very much didn't. And that's fair enough. It's hard to put all your faith in a model and there's always going to be something scary on the horizon. So what's the answer? There are really only two. The first answer is just not to invest in property. The problem with property is most people don't have enough funds to average in over time like you could with the stock market. So you're always taking on some timing risk. If you're that fearful of buying property and seeing it go down in value for a bit, then property probably isn't the right investment for you. And that's fine. But there is a second solution. Just adopt a strategy where it does not matter what happens in the short term. 
This is bad news if you're in property to get rich quick, because this strategy involves harnessing time to your advantage. We've actually got a free course about the power of property over the long term, which we'll link to in the description. But the point is, over a multi-decade time period, two things will happen. One is that the rent will keep coming in. Unlike property values, which jump around all over the place, rents are remarkably steady, even in crashes and recessions, and they tend to drift upwards with inflation. Given that you bought the property at a fixed price with a fixed amount of debt, the gradually rising rent is actually improving your return on investment over time. And there's a second amazing thing about time. I said a moment ago that prices jump around, which is true, but over the long term, the trend is consistently upwards. In fact, since 1845, property prices have increased by an average of 3.8% per year. And after factoring in inflation, they've grown by 1.1% per year in real terms. Now, your time horizon probably isn't 175 years, but the point is that the longer you do invest for, the less these short-term fluctuations matter, and the more you benefit from this gradual upward trend. Personally, I find all this very reassuring, but you might be saying, it's all very well to say adopt a strategy where the short term doesn't matter, but what if you pay no attention to short term prices, and as a result, you buy just before prices do crash? Well, yeah, you don't want that to happen. But if it does, time can help you out again. For example, the absolute worst time in recent memory that you could have bought property was January 2008. This was the absolute peak. Prices began to fall in February, and a year later, the average UK property had fallen by 15%. Not good. But if you just held on, six years later, you'd be back to where you started. And after 10 years, you'd be 20% up. Okay, that's not great, that's 2% a year. But if you used a 75% mortgage, that could equate to more like 6% return annually on the money you actually put in. Plus 10 years of rental income with rents that just kept on rising despite the recession. Does that mean you want to be buying just before a crash? Of course not. But the point is that the worst case sounds very survivable. Whereas not investing because of a fear of a worst case that probably won't happen is guaranteed to mean you won't achieve your goals. Remember I said earlier that people were missing the most important lesson of the property cycle? Well, this is it. That property prices go through a cycle, but each cycle starts from a higher point than the previous one. In other words, the crash at the end of the cycle doesn't wipe out all the gains since the beginning. That's why property is cyclical over short periods of time, but if you zoom the scale out, the long-term trend is always upwards. We've worked with a lot of investors over the years, and the most successful ones, and the happiest ones, have a very long time scale, and a strategy where whatever happens over the next five years doesn't matter to them in the slightest. Of course, if you're convinced that property prices are going to crash, you absolutely shouldn't buy, and you can enjoy hoovering up property at lower prices very soon. But there's also a risk that you'll be wrong, and we've already seen what that looks like. It's far better, if you ask me, to follow a strategy where you don't need to be right. And the chances of property being a bad investment over a 20 plus year time frame is absolutely tiny. If you can ignore the noise and stop worrying about what's going to happen in the short term, you can do some pretty amazing things with property, such as turn £100,000 into a million pounds. And in this video, we lay out exactly how to do that.